Defensively, again, you'll see us in the second practice building our defense, and you'll see how we build it from individual team to, uh, to moving it to two and three people to team play. Um, and you'll see us also do a little bit of our press attack or press defense. We'll do a little bit of our zone, but you'll get to see it all. You can see now where I say, um, you know, people say, well, how are you getting guys to come here? This isn't for everybody, would you say? You, you look at you, some of your players, could they do this? I mean, now, I want to be a Kentucky player. Can you do this? Give me a chance. Go play the lottery. Can you do this? So when we recruit kids, the, we had a kid in today. I just said, look, the bottom line is you just got to make a decision. Can you do this? Because if you can't, don't come here because now it's an aggravation, right? It's an aggravation for me, for the fan. Just don't. If you can, you're going to get better as a player. I may have said this already. Did they tell, tell you Big Blue Madness? Everybody says, well, you bring kids in because you're just trying to emotionally, you know, get them all. You know what I told those kids? That's every home game. Can you play here? Every home game is like that building was that night. Can you do it? If you can't do it, don't come here. Then I had to remind them, every road game is like that, except they're not for us. Everyone. So this isn't for everyone. This is hard. You got to practice and play to win. You got to have a mentality and a competitive spirit that you want to be special, or you cannot play here. That's not being all oh, arrogant. Or, I, if your son came with me, I want him to succeed. I want him to do well. I want him to go on. I don't want to have to fight him every day and then know he can't make it here. I'd rather do that before he gets here. Wouldn't you want me to be that way? Before he gets here, we have an idea. You can't do this. Or he has an idea. You can't do, he can't do this. I tell the players, make sure you tell them this is really hard here. Did you see that academic board in that hallway? We have 10 scholarship players, nine or, or three or, or better. It's not easy here. What happens if we do this right, we get a bunch of guys like this who have a burning desire and a fire so you can watch them go from drill to drill without taking a break and go an hour and 50 minutes without stopping in the whole time. Do you see why I don't do conditioning? We condition the whole practice. I want them to condition with a ball in their hand. If you condition without a ball, it's misery, isn't it? We all did it. Absolute misery. With a ball, they don't even know they're being conditioned. They're flying and smiling and running. And, and then you just say, great, we just did two hours of conditioning. You didn't even realize what we were doing. So our practices are like that the whole way. We're running. We're up and down. Now, let me say this. If you notice what I did, I'll do something that's up and down. And then the next set I'll do is what? Half court. Then we'll go to something that's up and down, and we'll go as long as I think I can get them to go. And then I'll break it down and we'll do something in the half court. Because what I don't ever want them to do is think it's okay to go half speed, because I'm exhausted. So I'm giving them their break is not a break, but it's half court, so you're not sprinting. Um, I'm gonna be honest, I still don't know how we're gonna play. Now you see that that two, three zone that I'm doing, the practice of it, is so we can play against it. Doubt if we'll ever play that. So I still got to figure out how we're playing. Whoever you have taken it out, make sure he's a good inbounder. You know what I'm saying? We think anybody can inbound. That's a bunch of crap. On that baseline or sideline, whoever you have taken it out, forget about all the fancy. I need. Make sure that is the best guy at throwing it in. You'll eliminate three turnovers a game. Just on that. That's just a little tidbit that I gave you extra, okay? I hope what you saw today intrigues you, stokes a little fire in you to think different. You know, it's funny, we run the break wide with no one running down the middle of the lane. But you have to run a guy down the middle of the lane because everybody runs a guy down. Adolph Rupp did it in the 40s, that's why we all do it. Why would you do it different? Well, because it's better for my team. Then I start looking at tape of some NBA teams and I remember Utah ran that way. 
because they didn't want to run Carl Malone up the middle because he was a player. They ran him up the wing. I'm looking at the New York Knicks right now. Run everyone wide. I'm even running trailers wide. What, what I say to you, don't get caught up in the thinking, I have to do it this way because everyone else does. Uh, we're thinking about a 1-3-1 one, one zone. Well, you have to put your point guard on the baseline. Why? Because everybody else does? Why don't we put our 6-3 active point guard who's a pit bull at the top and have our mush guy, the guy that can shut down anybody on the baseline, covering those corners because you're not going to make plays out of those corners now. You're not going to post us directly from the top to a big because we've got a big guy down there. Just thinking different, and I hope when you watched our practice you looked at things and said, wow, that's different, and then think it through for your own team. You got to go with your own talent, you got to go with your own personnel, and you got to go with your own personality. Just be you as a coach, that's the way it works the best. Thanks for being here.